20 bucks. They're on the line for 20 bucks. They keep on playing. Ha! Ah, nobody's paying. My band, some nickels and some dimes. Boom, 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 boom. Hi, Jabor. Jabor from Montreal. And welcome. Welcome into my kitchen. And Maggie, Mrs. Calabash. So please come in. I hope you're enjoying this gorgeous weather that we're having. And today we're going to, it's spring, it's summer, it's, ah, lovely. So we're going to do some scalloped asparagus uh, with cheddar cheese sauce. Um, serving that with some garlic buttered pasta, a very simple dish. And I felt like dessert. I don't very often eat desserts, but uh, this is a honey pot cream. It's a nice, quick summer dessert. Spring, summer, eat it whenever. Today I'm using um, fresh asparagus. Uh, it's in season, but if you can't get fresh, then use frozen. And I just cut off or snapped off the hard ends. And actually, I normally keep those for making stock, uh, vegetable stock. But I was cooking up the dog food and they have the asparagus. They love asparagus. And then just cut into little pieces. When choosing asparagus, I always like to have the thin asparagus. It's not as woody. So let's take this back to the butcher block, uh, to, the, yeah, <laughs> to the stove. So come back with me. I've got some water cooking, uh, just boiling. We need a lot of pans for this. So we're going to put those. I added a little salt to this water like that. And they're only going to take a few minutes to cook. Uh, I want them to be nice and crisp and tender. So I'm just putting that onto there just to bring it up to the boil. And in here, I've got to go back to the butcher block. Sorry, Derek. I'm coming back again. Okay. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> As you can see, I've got some pasta. Now, the recipe says pasta shells. You know, like that. But I have some of this coloured pasta in. And I like, to, it's, it's really quite expensive to buy the coloured pasta. So I like to mix it with ordinary pasta. Um, it's unfortunate, it does lose a bit of its colouring whilst cooking, but uh, it always looks nice. So I'm going to boil this up in some salted water. So come back. I've had the water boiling. There we are. We'll give it a quick stir so that it doesn't cling together. And that's not going to take long to cook. Where's its lid? There we are. You see, I've got pans everywhere. Um, I could do with, actually, I could do with a, a stove with another couple of burners on the side. Hint, hint. Knock, knock. You know, a nice big cooking stove. You know, with uh, with nice big burners, but For Christmas. ha, which Christmas? <laughs> As I used to say to the kids, it never comes. Um, so <laughs> we're just trying to bring this up to the boil. Now you see, on this particular stove, that's the fastest burner. That one is a little bit further down in heat. These two and the middle ones are quite low so it is really um it is quite a good stove it i'm going to give this another stir i want to i don't want it to cling together and you'll notice that um i've got a glass top um which is useful so i can i'm very good at boiling uh, pasta water over and with this i can keep an eye on it and hopefully not boil it all over the stove. So if you see me sort of peeping over like that, it's just to keep an eye on it. It'll only take about six minutes to cook. These are coming up to the boil. Now there's the recipe. We've got the asparagus uh, in a, a large skillet or saute pan, about an inch of water and a teaspoonful of salt. 
and so we'll just we'll just let them cook uh, for about three to four minutes um, like that I can actually move them over onto the other burner turn that up high now unfortunately these handles do get a little bit hot there we are move that over and whilst that's cooking I'm going to do the breadcrumbs. Ah, you see, I can see it. It nearly caught me. Look, I'm just going to open it slightly. It nearly caught me. Yeah, I've got some butter in here and I'm going to just make some breadcrumbs to go over the top. So let me just melt the butter. Just, I'm just, there we are. Now then, what have I got that I can mix it up with? There we are. I've just melted a little butter. And these, uh, I would say, use panko breadcrumbs. Or these are my own breadcrumbs. When I've got a little bit of bread left over, I, I just mulch it down and make some breadcrumbs and put them in the fridge, in the freezer. And then I've got them. Now... I'm going to add just a little more butter to that. It doesn't look very, doesn't look very buttery to me. I just want a little more butter. Uh, the homemade breadcrumbs, so they will probably take a little bit more uh, liquid or oil than the bought breadcrumbs because they're not as dry. Um, I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to that. And we're going to put this on one side for the asparagus. It goes on the top of the asparagus. There's not a lot. We don't want, we just want a little on the top, not too much. So can you see? That's the breadcrumbs. And we'll just put those on one side like that. Let me have a look at the asparagus. We don't want it to overcook. We want it to be nice and crispy. I'm, I'm, I'm searching for a small piece to taste. There we are. And what we're going to do is pour it, strain it, pour cold water straight over it so that it doesn't cook anymore. But it keeps nice and green like this and crispy. Mmm. Oh, yeah. That's hot. <laughs> I'm just making some space. Now, again, uh, I would normally save this water because it, it tastes gorgeous. And um, you can use it to help make the sauce. But let's just put that over the top. There we are. Put that over there. Cold water straight away. Just put that to drain like that. You see, I'm a little bit short of space. There we are. It's like um, musical musical pans around here. There we are. I, I, I don't want them to stick. I just want them to. You can use more. Uh, I'm using um, today, I'm using the shell pasta. There's nothing to stop you using spaghetti or whatever your favourite pasta is. So we've got the asparagus cooling, draining, and we're going to make a little sauce to go over the asparagus. Now in here I've got some butter. So let's just melt the butter. We're just going to make a nice cheese sauce. And we're going to put these, the asparagus in the oven. You can either put it in the oven to heat up or you can put it under the grill, under the broiler. I still call it a grill. I'm sorry. It's my English coming out in me. 
a little flower. I do have another pot of flour out just in case there's not enough. So you know the routine, add the flour to the butter and let the flour cook out for a little while, just for a few minutes so that it doesn't taste raw. Now gradually add the milk. I like to add about a third at a time. I don't put all the milk in at once because you know, sometimes you get a bit late, uh, a bit casual when you're weighing out the flour. Sometimes you've got slightly more flour, you might need a little more milk. Sometimes you're not quite, quite enough flour and you've got too much milk. So about a third at a time. And you can always make it extra creamy by adding a drop of, uh, a drop of cream to it. That is going really luxurious. Or you could add a drop of white wine to it. That sounds like a good idea. You see it's thickening. And that don't worry if it goes lumpy. The lumps will come out. Be careful you don't splash it everywhere like I'm doing. Use my dishcloth. There we are. Yeah, and we're going to put some Worcester sauce in this. Uh, we always say Worcester sauce in England, not Worcestershire. Uh, Worcestershire is the county where it's made, and Worcester is actually the market town where it's made. And it just happens to be next to um, the Worcester China factory, mm, the Royal Worcester. So it was only about an hour away from where we live. So guess who has quite a lot of Royal Worcester um, in the cupboard. And don't, I, there's only, I will use um, other brand names for things, but not for Worcester sauce. Uh, there's only one Worcester sauce and that, uh, to my mind anyway, and that's Lee Perrin's. So we're just coming up. I need half a teaspoonful of Worcester sauce in there. Not a lot, but it just, just adds that little warmth to it. Sometimes when I'm making a cheese sauce, I'll put some mustard powder in as well, just to give you that little bite. You see it's coming up. I've not seasoned it yet because I'm going to, now the recipe says dry, uh, uh, drain pimentos. I couldn't get any pimentos when I was shopping, any bottled pimentos. So I've got um, cherry, uh, cherry peppers. And <laughs> I'm, I'm rather partial to um, pickled peppers and I picked one out and ate it when I was prepping. It, they're, they're not very big. I thought, oh, that looks good. And you see, some of them have got seeds in, but most of them have got the seeds out because when I ate it, I'm surprised that there's not an indentation on the ceiling. It was so hot. I nearly died. I thought, oh my goodness. And so uh, I did seed most of the peppers. Now you see there's some milk on the working surface there. And let's just mop that up. That is a nice consistency for sauce. And tasting before, well, I'll put the cheese in. We'll switch the heat off and put the cheese in. Don't put the, don't add the cheese on the heat. You know, it, it's protein and it will thicken. So just like that, we want that to. Right, 
like that. Let's have a taste. It will need a little salt and pepper to it. Oh yes, it's got it's got a nice. <coughs> That's the pimento. Oh, <laughs> the the. Uh, I didn't use the pimento, but that's the, that's the peppers. There we are. Now we'll take that back to the butcher block and all the handles are hot. So let's go back to the butcher block. It will be easier to manage over there. So that pan, the asparagus. Can you see Derek? Yeah. I've lost the asparagus. <laughs> I'm going mad this morning. I don't need a pan stand for the asparagus. Look, you see a fair amount of liquids come out. We don't need that. But I do need a pan stand. I knew I needed another one. Just for the breadcrumbs. As I say, not a lot of breadcrumbs. So, I've got a buttered dish here, an oven-proof dish. Just move that over there. So we want to put the asparagus in the dish. This makes a nice main course, uh, or it can be a side dish. It's beautiful. Um, I like to eat it with some salmon, but that's me. So, you see, I've got these nice light pans, so I can actually pour the sauce over. Trouble is, the handle is a little bit hot. Let me just take a better grip on it. I love my cast iron but I can't manage to pour these days without grunting. I need la la la, that's it. A little spatula to get everything out. We don't want to waste any of this sauce because it tastes so good. Just cover That's it. There we are. Just cover the... Look, there's another little bit there. I need the pan stand again. Let it cool. And this is where we've got some, some breadcrumbs to put on. Tuck that in like that. And we're just going to sprinkle some breadcrumbs over the top. It just adds a little bit of crisp. Uh, and as I say, you could always just slip it under the broiler if, um, if you're in a hurry. But you see, if you've got somebody coming for a meal, you can get it to this stage. And then before you sit down or when the guests arrive, just slip it in the oven, heat everything through. And then you've got, and your, all your washing up will be done. And that's what I like, all the washing up done. So I've got the oven on at 355. The recipe says 350, but my oven is a little bit slow. So that's going in at 355. And let's just clean up the mess. There we are. I'm going to add a drop of cold water in there because look, it's stuck to the bottom and uh, cold water will help it. If you put hot water in, the starch is going to uh, thicken. There we are, just a drop of cold water. Don't do it whilst your pan is boiling hot. You'll crack your pan. So let's just have a look at the pasta see how that is cooking. Can you hear the dogs? Hmm. Oh yeah, that's well and truly cooked. So before I make dessert, I'm going to 
just finish off the pasta. Again, I'm not going to rinse the pasta because I want the, the butter and the garlic to cling to it. So strain the pasta. I'm going to use a different pan, a bit wasteful, but I'm doing the washing up so it doesn't matter. When I had an assistant, I was always very careful about the amount of pans I use for washing up because I thought, oh, poor things, they've got to see to it. Right, I've got some butter here because we want plenty of butter on the pasta. And we've got some garlic. It, it's really simple, this, but it makes the difference. Um, Parmesan a nice sharp parmesan and, and parsley. So simple, it's not true. But, you know, a lot of the Italian cooking, uh, like the French cooking, is so simple. They rely on the, the ingredients. They will use butter instead of, uh, they wouldn't use margarine. Uh, sometimes, depending on which part of Italy you're in, it will be olive oil but they do like the butter, and same in France. When, um, <laughs> when we were living in France, I'm going to put that in until it gets nicely fragrant. When we were living in France in summer, everybody had the doors open because we didn't have uh, air conditioning, and all you could hear as you're going round, uh, because the houses are quite close together, is at lunchtime, and that's people frying uh, or sautéing whatever they were cooking in butter. It was incredible. It was it was quite something. And I'm going to put just make sure that that I want that to cook for a few minutes. I'm going to that's cooked. Take it off the heat. Add the parmesan, add the parsley. So you see this is such a simple dish and just a little salt and pepper like that. And I'm going to put it on the back burner to very, very low. But at this stage, I'm going to add the pasta to it. Look how the colors have gone but they're still nice but they are a little bit expensive just to use on their own look just stir all the pasta like that over and we will just taste a little just to make sure it doesn't need any more salt and pepper and that mm. oh beautiful Come on, light, and you see, I can turn that down as low as possible. Put the lid on, and that will keep warm whilst we're ready to serve. So come back to the butcher block, dessert time. One of my favourites. Um, whew, uh, it's getting a bit warm in here. Now, it this... It sure is. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I can't take anything off either, <laughs> not on television. <laughs> um, this is, it, it's an old English dessert. Uh, and it's cream, egg white, and it's honey and lemon juice and a little whiskey. Actually, it's probably Scottish. Uh, if you're Irish, use some Irish whiskey. If you're Welsh, use some Welsh whiskey. Um, Welsh whiskey isn't very well known, but it is gorgeous. Uh, we lived on the Welsh borders and it's really peaty. It's beautiful. Now in here, I've got grated lemon rind with the honey, uh, use clear honey and whiskey. And just leave it, let's see if I can show you. Just leave it in there for about 20 minutes so all the uh, 
every can, everything, all the flavours can blend together. You could leave it in overnight. And the cream is just softly beaten. I did go a little, uh, almost a step forward uh, with the cream than I would normally because I wanted it to stand. And I'm going to put the cream in the bowl. I'm leaving a little cream so we can decorate. Just put a blob on top like that. And we're going to beat that the egg white. There we are. We're going to beat the lemon mixture into the cream. It's a very simple dish to make this. So just put that to one side. Add a little, don't add it all to begin with because you can curdle the cream. Or you can smell the whiskey. Oh! Take those out. Now, look, you see, you've got a nice mixture there. And now we're going to fold the egg white, which is nicely stiff. That's just a, <laughs> a drop of water in there. So look, it's stiff. It won't fall out of its, its container. Now you notice when I was whisking the egg white, I used, that's one egg white, and I used um, a container where it covered the whisk. And that is an easier way to, um, to do the egg white. And make sure the egg white is cold. Egg white doesn't stand very well. Uh, so I usually just whisk it up just as I'm going to use it. But you need to fold it in and that means going round the edge, use a metal spoon, go round the edge and fold over like that. And by doing that, you're incorporating all the air. You're not pushing anything out. Let's just have a little taste. Haha, <laughs> excuse. Mm. Oh yes, that is nicely subtle, not overpowering not overpowering with the whiskey or the lemon or the honey so we're not ready yet i've got to hurry up i'm not going to be ready so yep pile some on a little of that there we are that's the honey pot hey guys no, 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 I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I think he's early. There we are. Spent. They buy him 20 bucks. I'm going over time. And there we are. We got there. <laughs> so there you are.